that involves financial advisors. Two weeks ago, you know, I got involved with it and I said I paid a price. It involves a, uh, a uh, an advisor. Maybe I will just read it so that I won't I won't uh, make a mistake. No? I um, I send it to our group. I posted it in in my Facebook. And scam warning. Okay. Scammer will pose as client who wants to sign up by life insurance. He prefers dollars but will ask your help to source changers. He contacts you over the phone or messenger. The dollar he needs will be substantial. In my case, it was 120,000 US. The scam will be on the forex changer you referred. The risk is you might get involved as accessory to the crime or participate in the case when one is lodged by the by the victim. I was able to talk to the scammer to buy dollars as referred by an advisor. He was endorsed by an advisor as a client who will pay for a policy already. It resulted to a failed trade and financial loss as penalty. My bad to assume the advisor knew the client Meanwhile, the same advisor referred another trader who got due on the same day with 9 million pesos worth of dollars. This was just last Friday, January 12. When I asked for client details, kasi nakausap ko yung advisor, and then sabi niya, bibili ito ng policy. Nirefer ako doon sa kliyente. Tumawag sa akin yung kliyente. Nag-usap kami. Okay? And then on the following day, it was a Friday, which is usually the target date. Kasi yung Friday, ano yan, may cut-off yan, mabigat yan. Tadaan yan ng weekend, ano? So, yan yung, ano, yan yung mga nakikita kong mga telltale signs. And then, okay yung kliyente, talagang marunong sa insurance, okay? Talagang, syempre, you know, uh, sweet talker, okay? And then, noong Friday, nag-trade kami. Nag-done siya sa akin over, over SMS and over the phone. Nag-uusap kami. And then 11.30, kailangan magbayad siya. Pinigay ko na yung account nung, nung money changer. Yung siguro nung nakita niya yung money changer na legit, hindi na siya tumuloy. Gumawa na siya ng istorya to exit. So we ended up selling the dollars that we bought in the morning. We sold it in the afternoon. Resulted to a loss. Hello. Then by, by 1.30, I'm already sensing that it is really a scammer. Unang-una nagalit ako sa advisor. Sabi ko, your client, you know, uh, did not uh, make true of his uh, trade, so it resulted to a loss. It cost me some money to have trusted you and your client. Then, as I go on, para da realize ko, scammer ito, sinabi ko sa, sa advisor, mag-ingat ka, scammer yung kausap mo as early as about 2, 2.30. Okay? Then, hindi na sumasagot yung advisor. Okay? One BM I know had the same experience two months ago and got hold of a passport of the scammer, most likely to be fake. He was not successful when BM probed the client over the phone. BM told me telltale signs that the person is suspicious and felt to be a scammer. He will not agree to meeting. To a meeting. Let us be vigilant. Friends from our companies had experiences of the same attempts. So no. Nung, nung na-fail trade na kami, sabi sa akin ng kaibigan kong trader, sabi niya, kunin mo nga yung details ng kliyente niya, ipapa-blacklist natin sa, sa industry. Tinawagan ko si advisor. Tinanong ko yung buong pangalan, alam niya. Ano pa yung negosyo, alam din niya. Pero beyond that, wala na siya masyadong alam. Tapos nag-invoke pa siya ng client privacy policy. Sabi ko, niloko na ako ng kliyente mo. Sa totoo lang, tapos nagsabi siya, to be honest, hindi ko pa na-meet yung client, sabi niya. Doon nahulog, ano yung nahulog sa akin, hindi ko na alam. <laughs> sabi ko, ha? Wala pa ako nakita na kliyente, inupuan mo, bibili ka agad ng insurance one sitting. Kaya pag hindi mo nakita. Correct? Minsan, alam ko ha, kasi kahit na yung kliyente sabi niya, gusto kong bumili ng insurance, magtataka ka eh. Kahit na meron siyang pera, kahit na mukha siyang okay, Pero kung yung pera ay galing sa masama amla, hindi pwede siyang insurable. 
Kahit na mukha siyang bata, may pera siya, kung meron siyang medical condition, hindi siya pwede bumili, correct? So there are a lot of reasons why you will not meet a client and then before you'll be able to sell an insurance policy. The word that was used is client. I was in assumption that the media, at the very least, hindi pa pala at pumaasa siya na inimit niya yung client on the same day. Four of them, clearly wala. Then the following day, sabi ko, magbabayad tayo nito. Sinabi ko sa trader, for the first time that I've been trading with, with, with my friend, you know, this is the first time na nangyari ito. Sabi ko, don't worry, I will pay you all the difference. Pero nung nalaman kong 36,000, sabi ko, teka muna, para masakit yata sa akin kung akong pumayin ito lahat. Pwede ako magbayad kasi para hindi ko makalimutan yung experience. Ang tawag doon, tuition fee. <laughs> Sabi ko, tanda ako na ito, nagbabayad pa ako ng tuition fee in the area where I am supposed to be good at. But it is not my doing. Then, sinabi ko doon sa advice, magbabayad tayo, hati tayo. Alam mo sabi niya, bakit tayo, bakit ako magbabayad dyan? Eh, kayo nag-uusap, sabi niya. No. So sabi ko, hindi lalo pa nagpanting. Sabi ko, eh yung nanalugi ng 9 million, sabi niya, hindi ako pinagbabayad eh. Ba, galit pa. Sabi ko, ito sabi ko, ang, ang liability mo sa akin, hati tayo, 18,000. Hindi ko alam kung anong liability mo doon sa 9 million. Hindi mo pa alam kung anong iniisip niya. Sabi ko, correct? Best case scenario, sabi ko, magte-testify ka for the crime. And true enough, by Sunday, the client, you know, informed the advisor to make an affidavit. Sabi ko, worst case, magdasal ka, magingat ka sa pagsusulat mo. Sinabihan ko siya, baka itawid ka dyan, accessory to the crime. Matakot ka kapag hindi ka na kinontak ng kliyente because iba ang kukontak sa'yo. Correct? You know what I mean? Either way, you know, if it's going to be a legal case, abala ang aabutin mo. Is that worth 18,000? I don't think so. Correct? So, true enough. Pero na, hindi ko na alam kung ano nangyari. So, mag-ingat kayo. No? Kasi ako, uh, well, yun na nga nangyari. Ano? And then, when I look at, when I talk to my other clients, uh, my other friends from the industry, true enough, there are attempts to really, you know, um, <coughs> dupe. And then, nung binasa ko ulit yung, yung email exchange, uh, yung text exchanges, sinasabi ng kliyente, preferred niya individual traders. Eh, yung trader ko, ano yun? Uh, legit yun talagang money changer. Nung pinakita ko yung bank account niya sa video, money changer, kaya alam niya hindi siya makakalusot. Kasi dapat yun, magbabayad muna bago namin padala yung dollars. Ano nangyari doon sa individual trader? Umukay-okay yan. No? Pero pagdating doon sa final hour, final minute, magsiswitch yan. Sabi niya, hindi ako makapag-transfer, bayanan lang kita ng cheque. Good naman ito eh. Dineposit yung cheque, eh. tatanggapin yun. Pero magkiklear yun at the end of the day. One day na lang ang clearing, correct? Pero ang clearing, alas 5. Ang deposit hanggang mga alas 3. Pag dineposit mo yung pera, lalabas yun as your current balance. But not available because it hasn't been cleared yet. Meanwhile, transfer mo na yung, yung $120,000 to the scammer. Tapos na ang story mo. Correct? So, syempre, they will be able to sweet talk. Now, the problem kasi, the trader will be parang put in a bind kapag hindi niya tinuloy yun. Malulugi siya, alam niya. Kaya parang nag-take siya ng risk on the whole. Okay? Of the 9 million instead of paying perhaps 30,000 or 50,000 as a penalty. Which what happened to us. Correct? So, nag-ipit yung trader. No? Ah, siguro, sumasahit lang lang siya. Hindi ba? Parang, sige, nag-take siya ng chance. Okay naman ito. Okay naman yung kausap tipong ganun. No? So, yun lang.